Um, Bruce, it's genuinely an honour and a treat to get to speak to you again about your beautiful creativity. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, I want to start by asking about this new record, um, Only the Strong Survive. Was there a catalyst? Was there something that, I don't know, sparked that interest in, in this particular project? Uh, well, I got kind of, it was, it was during lockdown, so I, and I'd just written the record for the E Street Band, Letter to You, so I knew I wouldn't be writing in a while, but there was nothing going on. So I said, well, maybe I'll just go over and record, you know, and uh, I'll do something I hadn't done, you know, very much at all, which is sing somebody else's songs. Mm. So I went over and I started, and it was funny. Initially, it was like, it was really hard. I was picking material, and I'm going, it's hard to sing somebody else's songs, you know, and, and, and get them to sound uh, authentic and like it's coming out of, out, out of you, you know. So I made an entire record that I threw out. You know, and uh, uh, it'll it'll show up in different places, but at the but it was it just and there were some good things on it, but didn't feel quite right. So I came across this "Do I Love You" the Frank Wilson uh, Motown rarity in the states, where like I say, no one had heard it. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I said, I'm gonna try that. And so Ron, my producer Ron Ann Yellow created the track and the track was like really good, really strong. I said, well, if I can get up near Frank Wilson's range, I'm gonna take a swing at it. <laughs> and we cut that, that felt great. I said, well, maybe I'll orient myself towards soul music because I've, it's, it's how I grew up and all my great mentors were soul men that came, Sam Moore and of course James Brown, uh, Smokey Robinson as a writer, you know, I mean, just so many. And the great singers, David Ruffin, Levi Stubbs, all masters, you know. So they were they were all my masters. And I said, well, let me try and 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 sing some of this material. And when I got into it, I just found I had a, a good feeling for it. And it was very joyful. And also it was it was music that wasn't it wasn't weighed down thematically, you mm. know, by uh, okay, I'm writing about this, I'm writing about life, I'm writing about death, I'm writing about politics, I'm writing about the State of the Union. All of that kind of got set aside, and it was purely the joy of making music and uh, having fun. And I think that's what the record gets across, so I'm excited about that. Is there an element of the pressures off then when you're singing someone else's song? You can just almost kind of just have fun with it in a way. Yeah. And it's not yours. It's true, you know, and... Uh, I can sing it a few times and know if I'm going to get it or not, you know. And now I'm now I'm good at picking material. It, it took about we there's 15 songs on uh, only the strong survive, 40 left behind. We, Four, 40 songs that I didn't use. Wow. <laughs> they just so lying there the, weeping on the floor. That's the trial and error, <laughs> you know. Uh, now I've been getting a lot better at picking them. So, but initially it was the trial and error of. What what can I sing well, um, uh, you know? So that was a uh, that was the process, you know. Uh, but at the end of the day, it you know I think the record is main, the main thing. The record is is it's it it's it's just it's joyful and a lot of fun and 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 tips my hat and is a tribute to like I say all my mentors and masters yeah. and all those great records and those great productions. The I love how. We almost get a real different tone to your voice at times as well. It's diff There's different elements. We get, there's, I don't know, you're, it, it's almost like you're kind of playing with your voice a bit more because oh, these are yeah. different types of songs to, they are and they aren't because it's, you know, you could sing the phone book and we would listen because you know, the well, way that you tell stories <laughs> is just so great. But was that fun to play with your voice a, b a bit with it? Yeah, you know, uh, that's basically what I do. It's like we cut a track. Uh, or the basics of the track, and I'll go in and I'll just see if I can, if I'm going to be able to sing this well. So I'll start, and you know, your first take or two is you're just feeling your way through it, and then by the third, fourth, fifth, or sixth take, you know, you're I'm finding a, the style I'm going to approach the song with, mm -hmm. and I don't. It doesn't usually go much more than six or seven or eight, eight, eight times before. Okay, if I'm gonna get it, I got it, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, but on this record, I was able to sort of, I mean, I was guided by the voices that sang before me, you know, and, and 
I'm lucky that my range is basically where the great Motown singers sang. My range is similar to David Ruffin's, not as good. Similar to Levi Stubbs, not as good. Come but, on. Uh, but, uh, uh, but the range is similar, so I can sing that material, you know? And uh, 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 so that was fun to sort of. I didn't have to change too many keys. Occasionally I would change the key. If you're going to sing something that Smokey Robinson sang, or, or say Diana Ross, we do some, mm -hmm. Someday We'll Be Together. Actually, I sang that in the same key Diana Ross sang it because she sang it incredibly low. It was a record where she sang amazingly low, and uh, we could keep it in the same key. But usually I'll, I'll switch keys a little bit. So You mentioned Summer, and he features, obviously, on, on the record. And I wanted to talk to you about your, you know, putting together the team for this record. You know, who is going to work on this record with you? You know, you talk about Ron, but in terms of the instrumentation, you've got the E Street horns on there as well. Mm -hmm. What was that process of... of Deciding who was gonna who was gonna be on this re this record with you. Generally, the nice thing about this record is, is that I really just sang. You know, now of course when we went to horn players, uh, we tried out a few different things. But the E Street guys, they're so well versed in soul music, mm -hmm. and they're real rock horn players, and they know me really well. And I can go over to them and say, okay, and I can sing something to them and they'll play it. You know, so it doesn't, we don't need written, the charts don't need to be written out. So that's, all of the players that I play with are used to me coming up with them and humming, because <laughs> I can't write, write music. I used to me humming their parts to them and then they, then they play them back, you know. So these street horns were great for that. And the uh, strings were, uh, members of the New York Philharmonic, and I have a great guy, Rob Mathis, who's a great string arranger and conductor, and uh, we went into the city in two days in the studio and cut all the strings part, string parts. The thing about these records is they're huge productions. They have singers, they have horns, and they have strings on almost every record. They were huge productions, and so you've got to sort of get as close as you can. I wasn't interested in reinventing the wheel. I wanted to get I wanted to improve the record sonically, mm -hmm. but get as close as I can to the original arrangements, you know? So um, uh, it was challenging, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. How much did, you know, you talk, talking earlier about, you know, that, that kind of idea, you weren't trying to, you didn't have to write about anything, the, yeah. the lyrics were there, but, but did the lyrical content still have a, was there a purpose behind the, the, the lyrical content? No, nope, it was with? just whatever, you know, whatever, st I wish it would rain. You're not going to get better lyrics than that. Those are just, it's an incredibly, you, you realize all of these songs were incredibly beautifully written. They're masterpieces of, of writing, you know. And so all you've got to do is bury yourself in the lyrics that are there. And as a lyric writer, very easy to do. And also they were songs that were written to be sung. You know, I'll find on my songs, I'll occasionally write lyrics that are so complicated, I'll have a hard time singing them. And, uh, but this was all material that was written for a singer, mm -hmm. was written by writers for someone else to sing for the most part, you know, Gamble and Huff and uh, uh, just all the great writers of, uh, of, of that great soul music, mm -hmm. you know. So that was, uh, uh, it was nice not having that front in the front of my mind while I was performing. It was just like, getting into the vibe of the song and enjoying myself. I've selfishly picked a few for okay. us to talk about, if that's okay, some of my favorites. Let's hear That's it. all right. <laughs> um, I, and they're, they're such earworms as well. I can't stop singing them as well. They're kind of, it's that's lovely. Good. <laughs> it's, that's another thing I think that's beautiful is that you have, you've had this beautiful conversation with your fans, you mm -hmm. know, this lifetime of conversation that you continue sure. to have with them. And this is introducing this music to those new fans that you've brought along the way yeah. as well, and it's keeping it alive. Yeah, that's nice, you know? That's a lovely thing uh, to be doing. And hopefully people will go back to the original records and and, and check them out, and it's, that's the way that I heard the blues, uh, through the Rolling Stones, you know? Um, all of uh, Chuck Berry, through the Rolling Stones. I really discovered all that music first through the British invasion. The Beatles covered Motown all the time, amazingly well. And then I went back and found a lot of the original records, you know, so that was, that was what happened to me. And hopefully uh, new audiences will do the same. Yeah. 
Um, don't play that song. Benny King. Benny King did the original version, and then Aretha cut a transcendent version. Uh, and this was kind of my Jersey Shore version, <laughs> you know, kind of music we used to play Sunday nights at the Stone Pony with Southside and the Big Horn section. And so this is a very it's a piece of Jersey soul, the way that we arrange that. So you're still injecting your Bruce into these songs. That's what's so it's great. A little bit, it's a yeah. beautiful kind of <laughs> marriage of these two things. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, Night Shift. Oh, yeah. that's just a great song. You know, that's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. That's a song that can bring you to tears. The Commodore's version used to bring me to tears. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, beautiful tribute to Marvin Gaye and Jackie Wilson. But just a great, great song. And that was a, that was a real good call on my part to cover that. You know, it's like, because it was from 1985. It wasn't the vintage of a lot of the other music that I was covering. But I said, I love this song. I'm going to take a swing at it, you know. Beautiful, beautiful song. Just that way you say Marvin as well, the way you kind of say yeah, it, it, that it's such a it's a gateway to the song. Yeah, you've got to get that that name that, right, that, and you you know that first word. That's it's that's what I always say. It's wonderfully written. It's just Marvin, and something suddenly you're in the song. You know, uh, wonderfully written, beautifully written song. Um, turn back hands of time. Tyrone Davis. Yeah, uh, just a great. Be North Carolina beach music, you know, is is there's a sub sub cult culture in the states that's all this beach music from down south, mostly the Carolinas, and uh, it has that feeling that and the Four Tops uh, when she was my girl, they those are soul pieces that cross over into this beach music subculture, and so initially I believe it or not the record was influenced a lot by that beach music and. Uh, uh, I said, yeah, I, I, so turn back the hands. It's just, just a great, great song. Great the strings on that as well. The strings yeah. on that. Da -da 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 -da. You know, it's, it's just cool. <laughs> you know, all the, the great string arrangements. They had great string arrangements, all these records. You know, so it's, it was, it's a lot of fun recreating them. A lot of fun. I love your version of The Sun Ain't Gonna Shine Anymore. Oh, oh great song. Another, another great oh. song. <laughs> you know, and of course, the Scott Walker version is, is pretty definitive, you know, but it's just a fabulous and beautiful song. Sounds like it could be a hit today. It's just, just a gorgeous piece of music, you know, that really allows me to bring out the full voice that I used to sing with on Born to Run, Thunder Road, where I had this big, round, almost operatic voice that I was singing in, attempting to... Uh, imitate Roy Orbison at the time. Uh, so I got to use that voice again on, on that cut. You know, a lot, it, was, it was, was a good time. When I said about you having this, this beautiful lifetime conversation with your fans, you know, mm -hmm. fans who've been with you from the start, new fans that, you, that come along the way and stuff. Sure. What do you think the conversation is on this record? What are you trying, what's the conversation? Just, I'm having fun. I hope you have fun with it too. <laughs> That's all there is on this record. It's just, Enjoy these this cla the, these songs are part as much a part of the American songbook as Cole Porter and Gershwin, in my opinion. You know that they deserve they're so well written and mm. crafted that they deserve to be uh, thought of in that same vein. So and 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 it's just joyful. You know it, it, the nice thing about the record is it's 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 not so pressing. Mm. It's it's just you know it it can be it's so full and deep and joyful and it's purely musical you know it's so musical these these records were so musical that I got to to immerse myself in in those productions and uh, so it's just uh, something that fans have fun with. Um, fans are gonna have a lot of fun next year when you go on this enormous tour. Yeah. Oh, I mean the, the state dates in the states and then all over yeah. Europe as well. Um, what 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 is live? Playing live mean to you still? Does it mean the same now as it did? It's it's probably still the best thing I do. You know, it, it, it's a uh, uh, I, you know, I I played the other night the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Did a version of Great Balls of Fire with John Mellencamp, my good friend. And I realized you get out there and suddenly all those muscles come to the front again, and you go, yeah, this is this is so naturally me. i I'm I'm so comfortable on stage, and you know having that give and take. And it's so it's so much fun for me that I realized you know it's been six years so I I, I I'm, I'm I miss it and I'm 
ready to get back into it. I think one of my favourite times of seeing you live was when I was very pregnant nine years ago at the O2 in London. And I just was blown away by the energy and the, the, the kind of, you know, you, you haven't even finished a song and you're kind of like two, three, four, straight into the next one. And you're, it's infectious watching you. It so is. When you're sitting down thinking about what this tour and this show is going to be, what can you tell us? Where are we, where are, we, where are you going to take us? Uh, well, I, I'll start out with the set list. I'll send the band. <laughs> and it'll usually, you know, it'll be some of our, of course, a lot of our classic stuff. And then whatever I'm thinking about or working on at the moment, you know. Uh, uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of how it begins. As far as the craft of presenting it, I picked up from all my the great mentors, uh, Sam and Dave, James Brown, the guys who were the great band leaders and great front men, you know. So the way I don't, I like the the show to start and not stop. So we don't take very much much of a break between songs. Max Weinberg has a brutal job to do <laughs> because he literally he starts and he doesn't stop for three hours. I'll get to stop at least to go one, two, three, four. <laughs> I get to stop for 10 seconds. Max is still doing this. And uh, so, but the forward momentum of the show is something, so it compounds itself. The power of the music compounds itself song to song to song to song to song. It's, it's just part of the craft of live performing and uh, uh, it's probably the thing I do best, and I'm looking forward to using those muscles again. Where do you start with that set list? How do you compile that set list? Well, we have a lot of stuff that works really well. So uh, the set list changes after the an, an initial run of, I don't know, some shows. The set list will start to change pretty dramatically night after night. And I'll sit backstage an hour or two before we play. I just write something out, thinking about how things are going to transition, go from one to another, thinking about maybe if we're two nights in the same town, what didn't we do, what, you know, what'll we do tonight that we didn't do last night for kids to come back and folks to come back uh, to, uh, uh, to hear us again. And uh, it's just very free flowing. It's, it's, it's literally, I'll sit down a couple hours before this show and, or sometimes just a half hour, and then I'll send it into the band so they have a chance to refresh things that they may not have played, you know, in quite a while, you know. You give them half an hour, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick, get, get in there and learn. <laughs> Relearn this one. <laughs> but you said six years since you've you played live. Yeah. You, you've, you've released three albums. Three albums? Yeah, we've in stayed that... busy making <laughs> records, you know. I did Western Stars. And so instead of playing live, we made films, you know. So... Uh, Western Stars did Western Stars film, Letter to You, and Letter to You film. And so that's kind of how, instead of performing, you know, we, I had a chance to make some films. And, uh, uh, but, you know, obviously nothing takes the place of going to s your town and playing your music for you, you know, that's, that's the best thing you can do. And you've got to get these three records in the set list though as well. That's right. Yeah, so you get the chance to play them. Very busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you say you're most looking forward to in terms of live, because the stamina that you have as a as a songwriter and a storyteller is just yeah. extraordinary. You know, I talk about the fact that lockdown, COVID, you still release three records, yeah. and you're back out on the road already. Yeah. It's just um, just the excitement of playing live again. You know, seeing what it feels like. You forget what it feels like after a period of time, and because you're always anxious about leaving home. You know, yeah. my home life is so great and. And uh, I get anxious about leaving, and uh, but then you have that moment where you just exchange that energy with the audience, and you look out and you see the faces that you've looked out at for 50 years. In two years, my band will have been playing for 50 years. You know, that's really something. <laughs> you know, that's a long time, and uh, so. Uh, it's richer now than it's ever been, really. You know, it's quite wonderful. Why do you think that is? Why do you think think you still have this beautiful, you know, like I said, it's infectious, this passion that you have to... Uh, it's just who I am, you know. It's, it's who I've been since I was a teenager. And it's still, where I, it's still where I go to find myself. 
you know? It's one of the main places I go to find myself. And that, that still happens every night when I come out on stage, so it's quite wonderful. It's lovely. Well, thank you for keeping us entertained yeah. through lockdown. And my thank pleasure. you for the thank new you. records. Yes. And I can't wait to come back and yeah. dance my pants off on tour. <laughs> thank you, Bruce. Thank you Thanks so a lot. much. Thank you. <laughs>